Hey, this is John Buck with uh, the next array signal processing video. This one continues our discussion about uh, spatial covariance matrices and uh, how we can visualize them and think about them. Uh, in many of the cases we, we talk about in this class, we're going to model that spatial covariance matrix or that the random vector as a complex normal vector with some uh, with zero mean. So this is, should actually be a zero vector and a covariance matrix S sub X. And what we mean by this is that the, the PDF of X is some normalizing constant that doesn't depend on X, and then an exponential that's minus X Hermitian S inverse X. Now, normally we're used to seeing a half here for the real case, but for the complex case, there's not a half here. But that constant isn't so much what we're worried about. We want to get a conceptual picker, picture in our mind of, of how do these PDFs behave, and how does this covariance matrix that we just talked about and defined in the last video affect the behavior when it's a Gaussian signal. And so what we can look at this and say, well, anything, any set of values of x that have the same value here will have the same PDF, because this constant doesn't depend on x. So if this is, a, if this is some constant, say, uh, alpha, then as long as x Hermitian S inverse x is, is equal to alpha, all those points x have the same probability, right? So if X Hermitian S inverse X is equal to some constant alpha. Then all th that that set of X are what we call equal probability or equal probable. Right, so it's saying another way we can think of it is that it defines a set of points that all have the same probability. And we could also look at this and say as alpha increases, the probability of that set will go down. Right, so the, the bigger this quadratic form is, the smaller the probability, right? Because as alpha gets bigger, the pr probability is based on e to the minus alpha is getting smaller. Or seen the other way, as alpha gets smaller, that's a set of points that are more probable. So we can't really, ha we don't have the artistic skills, not just my limitations. As humans, we don't really have the artistic skills to draw n-dimensional complex vectors and, and sketch them out in space. There's no, uh, no way to do that. But we can draw on basic geometric ideas to have a conceptual idea of what it's like. And so we're going to, uh, since we can't draw the complex case directly, it's still useful to think about the real case and what we would do for a very simple 2D case where we can draw what's going on. So imagine I have a 2D example that looks like this, where I just have two, two uh, terms like this. <clears throat> uh, one of the, the reasons we start with this example is that this is saying, uh, first of all, that the, the, the two sensors might have, or the two signals might have different variances, but they're uncorrelated, right? The off diagonals are, are all zero. The other reason that, another nice feature of that is it makes inverse matrices very easy, that the inverse of this matrix is just the inverse of each element. So it's sigma one squared to the minus two and sigma two squared to the minus two. So now if I look at, if we let, X be a, a, you know, we can't draw the n-dimensional case, but we can draw the two-dimensional real case. So let X be from a, just a real normal with zero in this covariance. Then we can still, we can write out the similar probability. When we write this out, we see it's got the same rough general form. And rather than getting caught up in the details of, well, what would the constant be? And this has a minus a half. It still has the same key feature we're interested in which is that it still depends on a quadratic form of the data and the inverse of the covariance matrix, right? So again, we see the same thing here, that if x for the set of fam the, the family of points or the set of points that s x transpose times s inverse times x is constant alpha, say, all those points have the same probability. So again, we say they're equal probable. 
So we're curious, we can sort of draw like an elevation map of probability. Sort of if you're going to go out hiking and you get an elevation map that shows contours of equal elevation to figure out where the hills and valleys are and look at a landscape map that way. If you're hiking or cycling, you get in practice of looking at these things. Uh, we can do the same thing of sort of drawing a landscape map with lines of equal probability. So let's work out what this would look like. We'd say, well, I'd have if x is equal to x1 and x2, then x transpose s inverse x. If I just write it out, I get x transpose is x1, x2. That inverse, sigma 1 to the minus 2 power, sigma 2 to the minus 2 power, and 0. And then x1, x2. So I can sort of multiply these matrices through one at a time to say this is the thing I want to be equal to some constant alpha. So if I multiply all these, these last two out, I'm going to pause the video and do it just to save a little time. So when I multiply these two together, I get that. And now I can go on and multiply these two through. And I get that I want the set of points where this is x1 squared over sigma 1 squared plus x2 squared over sigma 2 squared is equal to alpha. Right, so what set of points satisfy this equation such that x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x2, or, or sorry, x1 squared over sigma 1 squared plus x2 squared over sigma 2 squared is equal to a constant. So pause the video, dig into the vault of your geometry memory, memory and see if you can come up with it. That's right, the answer is an ellipse. Make a little space to write that. Right, so these take the form of ellipse, where the major and minor axes are sigma 1 and sigma 2, depending on which one is bigger. Those, those tell us the, the lengths of the ellipse with, with axes sigma 1 and sigma 2. So let's see a, an actual pra a, a specific example of it to see how that works. So if I start with this covariance matrix, I can then take the inverse. I take the inverse of this and for the first step. I get Sx inverse is 1 9th, 0, 0, 1 over 25. So now when I go compute x transpose Sx inverse x, and I say I want to find the set of family of points where this would be constant, then that would be equal, that would give me x1 squared over 9 plus x2 squared over 25 equals that constant alpha. I'm looking for uh, points of this form here. Right, so if I go sketch this, I say, well, when x1 is 0, x2 has to be plus or minus 5. And when x2 is 0, x1 needs to be plus or minus 3. And in between, I have an ellipse. So let me uh, sketch that out. So if I mark in my axes with x1 and x2 and my, my intercepts at the origins, it looks like this. So I know that the, the, the points of equal probability now would be uh, this ellipse. Let me see if I can draw it. That's not a very good ellipse, but you get the point. That say all the points sort of on this contour have the same probability, which would be based on alpha equal to 1. Right? I would plug alpha in up above and say all these points have alpha equal to 1, so therefore they have the same probability. I could do also another one that wouldn't be too hard to find is alpha is, uh, is 1 ninth. Well, again, as the alpha gets smaller, closer to 0, I would expect things to be smaller radius. Right? This, is, this would be smaller here. And so we'd have, for example, uh, for 1 ninth when x1 is plus or minus 1, I'd have these points here. And then the other ones would be uh, plus or minus 5 thirds, so not quite 2. So I could mark those here and here. And so this would be a higher probability, an ellipse of higher probability inside. Right, this would be the, the alpha equals 1 ninth ellipse inside. And as I get alpha gets bigger and bigger, I could make larger and larger ellipses sort of spreading out the base of the mountain. So these are all points of equal probability, or we sometimes call these concentration ellipses because the probability would be concentrated inside this interval. This is higher and higher probability, like the hill of a, a 2D Gauss here. Okay, so that's uh, a very useful thing we can then think about. Well, if I have a signal or, or sometimes noise that's uncorrelated, even though it's an n-dimensional space, I can think of it saying, well, uh, 
I guess the other one we should mention is what happens when we have white noise. If all these are the same, let's quickly see what that looks like. So if I have the example we've seen already with white noise, that means all the sensors are independent or uncorrelated uh, with equal power. And so I have S of X looking like this. So the inverse looks like this. And the quadratic form looks like this. Or I can also just multiply through by sigma n squared on both sides and say I'm looking for the set of points where x1 plus x2 squared is equal to some constant times sigma n squared. Well, in this case, this is like a, this, the simplest form of an ellipse is a circle. Right? If I went and made my equal contours for this case, if I draw my equal contours, it will look like this. I just have a circle, and so it's saying the power is the same in all directions. There's no real constant, the concentration it's sort of like a ball. I can spin it around, and that will turn out in a little while in several applications this semester. That kind of insight will be important because this, the spherical nature of the concentration ellipse does generalize to higher dimensions. Even if I have n-dimensional complex noise, it's saying that I don't have any preferred orientation, that in fact I can rotate my axes anywhere I want, and the behavior of the noise is unchanged. So that's an important and powerful property of white noise that makes it very easy for us to work with and get answers from. All right, so this video has gone on long enough. This is an introduction to our uh, concentration ellipses and how we can use them to think about conceptually and visualize, sort of using 2D examples, visualize what higher dimensional uh, complex Gaussian processes might be looking like and thinking like. The natural question this video raises is say, well, th those are nice and easy to draw when you have uh, uncorrelated things. When you have diagonal uh, covariance matrices, whether they're uh, actually white noise like this or even the ones I drew earlier, we still have the the angles, I'm sorry, the axes of the ellipse lined up with the uh, axis, x1 and x2 axes. So everybody's all lined up. The final video will we'll talk about how do these two compare. Or, what, or sorry, rather, what can we do when the noise is not uncorrelated? What happens when we have correlation from sensor to sensor? So let me uh, stop this video and then I'll I'll pick that top I'll pick up that idea in the next video.